Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, this is Rez, and in this video, we will discuss about testamentary succession. So, if you're ready, let's start! In our other video, we have discussed the concept of succession, and we have determined the three elements and the basis of succession. So in this video, we will particularly discuss about testamentary succession. So there are three types of succession. Number one, testamentary succession. We also have intestate succession and mixed succession. So testamentary succession happens when the dissident left a will before he died. Otherwise, if he has no will, then the succession process could be intestate, meaning the operation of the law will happen because there is no will. Or when the succession process is partly testamentary and intestate, then that is called a mixed succession. So in this video, we'll focus our discussion about testamentary succession. So testamentary succession, it results from the designation of an heir made in a will executed in the form prescribed by the law. So when I say will, this is a formal document um, prescribed by law wherein the dissident would name an heir, okay, who would inherit or who would succeed his wealth or his estate. The dissident may dispose his properties in his last will and testament in the manner he wants. However, he must reserve some for certain persons who are called by the law as compulsory heirs. So as we have discussed in our other videos, the, the from the entire estate or inheritance of the deceased person, there is this portion which is reserved strictly for the compulsory heirs, for the children, for the spouse, and for the parents. So this portion is called the legitim, and this legitim could not be just disposed to anyone. Okay, this is reserved for the compulsory heirs. So in testamentary succession, there is an execution of a will. So the remaining portion of the estate after deducting the legitim is called the free portion. So from the estate in total, we have the reserved portion of the legitim and the free portion. This can be given by the testator to anyone he wants to inherit. It could be his brother or his friend or his neighbor to anyone he wants to inherit. So a will, it is an act whereby a person is permitted with the formalities prescribed by law to control to a certain degree the disposition of his estate to take effect after his death. So it is a formal document, as I have said, where the testator, the dissident, would name persons who would inherit his properties or his estate. And from the moment of death of the dissident, the rights to the succession are transmitted and the possession of the hereditary properties deemed transmitted to the heir. So there are several kinds of will. So number one, we have the notarial or ordinary will. This one, which is executed in accordance with the formalities prescribed by Article 804 to 808 of the New Civil Code. It is the will that is created for the testator by a third party, usually his lawyer, which follows proper form, signed and dated in front of the required number of witnesses and acknowledged by the presence of a notary public. So, since I am not a lawyer, I will not focus on this matter, okay? And we also have holographic will. It is a written will which must be entirely written, dated, and signed by the hand of the testator himself without the necessity of any witnesses. So, a holographic will in contrast to the notarial will is that the witness and of course, the holographic will is written by the hand of the testator himself, unlike the notarial or the ordinary will. And the third, we have the codicil. This is a supplement or addition to a will made after the execution of a will and annexed to be taken as part thereof by which any disposition made in the original will is explained 
added or altered okay so now let's go to how much or to what extent should the compulsory heirs received from the dissident's inheritance okay so we have here a table. So it is said that if there is only legitimate children or descendants, they would share one half. So their legitimate is one half of the entire estate. And if there is only illegitimate children alone, then they will also inherit one half. Okay. If there is a presence of the legitimate children, the natural children and the illegitimate children, the LC, NC, and IC, the legitimate children would share one half of the entire estate. So the natural child is, of course, an illegitimate child. So they would share only one half of the share of one legitimate child. And same with the illegitimate children. They would also inherit only one half of one share of one legitimate child. If there is a presence of one legitimate child in a surviving spouse, then the legitimate would be the child would get one half of the entire estate while the surviving spouse would inherit one fourth of the entire estate. If there are two or more legitimate child in a surviving spouse, then the legitimate children as a whole collectively, they will receive one half of the entire estate. Okay? And then the surviving spouse would inherit one share of one legitimate child, okay? If there are illegitimate children and a surviving spouse, both of them will inherit one-third of the entire estate. So, one-third for the illegitimate children as a whole, and then one-third for the surviving spouse as a whole. So, if there are five illegitimate children, they will share the one-third portion of the entire essay, okay? And when there are two or more legitimate children and then there is a natural child or children and a surviving spouse, again, the legitimate children would inherit one-half as a whole, one-half of the entire essay, while the natural child, which is an illegitimate child, would share one-half of one share of one legitimate child well the surviving spouse would inherit one share of one legitimate child when there are parents or ascendants alone they will get one half okay so if you notice uh, the share of the parents is the same as the share of the child or children but they can only inherit if there is no legitimate children or child and no descendants okay because when there is a child then the parents are excluded from succession when there is a spouse when the spouse uh, inherits alone then he would get either one half or one third so why there is an or so General rule, the surviving spouse takes one half of the distributable estate. Okay, so that is a rule. If there's no child, whether legitimate or illegitimate, and there's no parent, then the surviving spouse is, as a rule, will receive one half of the estate. But there are some exceptions. Number one, when the marriage is conceived for purely financial gain motive. So when the marriage is or happened only for an obvious financial gain motive then the spouse would get only one-third of the estate another exception is when the marriage is made at the moment or point of death so for example if the marriage happens just a day or week or month before the death of the dissident, then the surviving spouse would inherit, again, one-third only of the net distributable estate. However, the surviving spouse gets one-half despite these two exceptions above, despite these reasons, okay? Despite the financial gain motive, despite the 
the timing of the death and the marriage despite of those okay when the couple had been living for more than five years before the actual marriage then the spouse would get one half of the net estate okay if there is ascendant and a surviving spouse the ascendants would get one half of the entire estate and the surviving spouse would get one fourth lastly when there is the presence of ascendant, surviving spouse, and illegitimate children, the ascendants would get one half of the entire estate, the surviving spouse would get one eighth, and then the illegitimate child or children would get one fourth from the entire estate. So those are the distribution under testamentary succession and among the uh successors mentioned the legitimate child or children would get the highest um, value of inheritance okay that's one half so let's have an illustration juan de la cruz died leaving a net hereditary estate of 50 million to his five children so we are asked to compute the legitimate of each compulsory heir so there are five children and all of them in all of them collectively will receive one half of the entire net estate and that is 25 million so this 25 million is the legitimate the restricted portion and the excess will be the free portion so each of the five children will receive five million pesos from the legitimate okay so it is not one half each child because obviously the share will be more than the entire estate, right? Uh, the one half there is to be divided equally among the five children, okay? So that's 25 divided by 5 million divided by five of them. So each will get 5 million um, value of inheritance. While the free portion can be distributed by the dissident to anyone he wants to inherit. They could be still these five children and they could also be another person. But again, the children is entitled only to claim five million each. Okay. And it is on the discretion of Juan de la Cruz and who will inherit the free portion. Okay. Another illustration. Juan de la Cruz died leaving a net retired estate of 50 million to his five children and his wife. And again, we are asked to compute the legitimate of each compulsory heir. So again, our net estate is 50 million and the legitimate of the children, the five children, is of course one half. And since there are five children, the share of the wife is only equivalent to one share of one child. Okay, so if the five children as a whole will receive 25 million so that's 25 million for the five of them so 25 million divided by five that's five million for each child so meaning to say the wife will also inherit only equivalent to the share of one child so therefore the wife would share one share of one child so that is 25 million divided by five so 5 million so the legitimate here is 30 million in total this is restricted from distribution and the free portion would be 20 million pesos okay so each child will get 5 million from the legitimate that's 25 divided by 5 and the wife will also get an equivalent to one share of one child so we also have third um illustration Juan de la Cruz died leaving a net retiree estate of 50 million to his five children, his wife, and his illegitimate sons, assuming Juan has an illegitimate son. So we're also again asked to compute the legitimate of each compulsory heir. So again, we have a net estate of 50 million and the share of each of the five children is again one half from the entire estate and it is 25 million and the share of the wife is equivalent to one share 
of one child. But the share of the illegitimate son will always be lower than the legitimate children or child. So if the share of one child is 5 million, then the share of the son, the illegitimate son, is only half of that. That means the share of the illegitimate son is only 2.5 million. And the free portion is 17 million 500. So again, it is on the discretion of Juan de la Cruz on who would inherit the free portion. It could be the five children, it could be the wife, it could be the illegitimate son, or it could be all of them. So it depends on Juan de la Cruz's discretion. But again, as to the legitim, this amount, this could be not this could not be distributed to anyone. Okay, this is reserved for the three of them. Okay, so each child will get five million from the legitim, that is 25 million divided by five. The wife will get equivalent to one share of one child, and a legitimate son will get a half share of one child. So finally, we have here a more complicated. So Juan de la Cruz died leaving a net retiree estate of 50 million to his four children, his wife, and two illegitimate children, parents, and three siblings. So what did I say? If there are children, the parents are excluded from succession because the presence of the children excludes the parents and other persons in the ascending lines okay anyone above the deceased person is, is excluded from succession because of the children okay and the siblings as i have said they could not inherit because they could only inherit if there is no other persons, there are no children, no wife, no parents. So the siblings could inherit when that case happens. But since in this case, there are children, so the siblings are also excluded from succession. However, as to free portion, the deceased, the testator, can give the free portion to the parents or to the three siblings or to both of them or to all of them. So... However, as the legitim, these parents and siblings could not inherit the legitim. Okay, so we have a net estate of 50 million. So the legitim of four children, again, it is one half of the entire estate, it is 25 million. And then the share of the wife is equivalent to one share of one child. So that is 25 million divided by four, that is 6 million to 50. And then the share of the two illegitimate children would be equivalent to half of the share of one child. So if the share of one child is 6,250,000, so divide by two. But since there are two of them, then multiplied by two. Okay, so that's again another 6,250 because there are two of them. The parents will get nothing from the legitim, and the, the three siblings will also get nothing from the legitimate so we have the remaining balance or the free portion of 12 million 500 so this free portion again could be given to the parent or to the siblings or to all of them depending on the discretion of the dissident okay so that's it i hope you learned a lot from this video discussion and I hope you'd watch my other video about intestate succession. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.